Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a pug in graphite. Now this is predominantly going to focus on how to draw black fur. But to start with I like to work on the eyes first. Now obviously this is where the main emotion and expression stems from so for me personally I do like to make sure that I've got that right before I work on the fur or any other part of the portrait. Now when it came to mapping in the eyes of this pug, they were obviously larger than most other breeds, so I wanted to be making sure that I really captured the shape, the size, and the way that the reflections were positioned. Now all of this is going to ultimately affect the shape of the eye, so you do want to be making sure that you're paying very close attention to your reference photo. Now when it came to working on the fur, like always, I like to break it up into small manageable sections. So I'm only focusing first of all on the fur below the eye. Once I've got that to about 70-80% complete, I start working on the top of the eye. Now this for me helps for me to keep motivated, I don't then find I'm skipping through layers and I'm able to then get that drawing up to more of a realistic standard similar to the reference photo. So if you do spend your time staring at your reference photo more than drawing because you're not quite sure where you should be, then that's an indication that you're working on too much of a larger area. Scale it down slightly and you'll find there that it will be far more easier to tackle. Now there are a couple of reasons why I chose the reference photo for this piece. One, the expression, the black fur, the contrast was beautiful. But the other was the difference of effects with the outer focus portions and the in focus portions. So the ear and the chest of this pug was out of focus, so I had to be making sure to adjust my pencil techniques to get that soft, blurry edge. If I use the same techniques over all of this, then I'm not going to have that balance with out of focus and in focus sections. So now more of the fur starts to get drawn in, this is where you can see how the layering process and contrast are so important. Now when drawing black fur, it's very tempting to actually just use your softest, darkest pencil, something like a 9B, right from the beginning. Now I personally don't like to work that way because I like to build up the depth gradually. So here I start off with more of my subtle layers and then I darken them up as I go. So it's at this stage where I've got a nice foundation of the dark fur where I can now start putting in some highlights. So I'm using there the Tombow Mono Eraser to lift up that graphite and hint at those hairs that are catching more of the light on the very top. Now there are a couple of ways to get to the same end, so you can draw around your highlights and leave the white of the paper showing through. In some cases I do do that, so for the brightest highlights in the eyes or the nose, that works really well. But for the fur, I do like to add my highlights on top through the use of my erasers because I feel that I get more of a natural look. If I draw around my highlight, they'll tend to have more of a rigid edge and that's not what I want, especially when drawing soft fur. Now here on the eye, on this eye, I actually saw a couple of people in the reflection. Now because this was an 8x10 size portrait, I can't add a huge amount of detail, but I can certainly focus on the shapes. So I know that in the reference photo you could see the two people, but I'm just hinting at my main lights and darks. This is making that eye look very realistic. I've got my contrast right, the darkest parts are really dark, and then again I'm leaving either the white of the paper showing or using a very small amount of graphite just to tint that paper to give me a light highlight. Now at times throughout this drawing you'll see a post-it note or a pad of paper and what I'm doing there is showing exactly how I'm moving my pencil and what desired pencil strokes we want to be creating for the type of fur that we're drawing. And this is because this tutorial on Patreon was recorded all with a voiceover while I was drawing, so I'm able to explain every process in the moment. If you are interested in following along to this or any of my other real-time tutorials, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Now again, as I continue to build up the fur here, it's all about a layering process, building that up in stages. I don't like to be focusing on getting that darkest layer first, I do want to be making sure that each section of the black fur, even if it is looking really really dark, is still given two, three, four layers. Now the actual number of layers that I apply is going to vary from one section of fur to the next and obviously different fur textures are going to require different techniques. But I don't want to be limiting myself just to work through a portrait quicker. The layering process is important, it's just as important as the pencil technique using your erasers and the contrast. We can't achieve good contrast without layers, we can't use the erasers properly without layers and this is something again that I speak 
in depth in the real time version on Patreon. One of the most common questions I'm asked about erasers is how the Tombow Mono Eraser, it can't create fine lines or it doesn't lift the graphite. Now I actually experienced the opposite of that. Here you can see I'm able to remove that graphite fairly easily. I'm able to create some nice fine thin lines. Those details look like they've been drawn with a lighter pencil, which is exactly what I want to achieve. But the one thing that I found when using the Tombow Mono Eraser is it will have more of a difficulty removing the graphite if the graphite hasn't been applied in the right way to start with. So if excessive pressure has been used on the pencils, those erasers are going to have a much harder time to lift that graphite because it's been pushed more into the tooth of the paper. This is where that layering process and building up the layers gradually really comes together to help not only bring more depth and realism to the piece, but helps to use the erasers to the best of their ability as well. Now, because this is such a crucial aspect when working with graphite, this is something that I cover thoroughly in every single one of my tutorials on Patreon. It really is so important and it can get frustrating. If the erasers are not working, it can make us feel really deflated, but it's not the erasers that are usually the problem. It's the fact that the graphite hasn't been applied in the right way. So that is something, as I say, that I do cover thoroughly. One thing that I've mentioned throughout this video is pencil technique. Now I have a video here on YouTube, it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in graphite. I'll link that in the description below if it's of interest. But there I talk about three main things. The pencil technique relies on fur direction, fur thickness and fur length. Those three things are obviously affected with how we move the pencil, how we hold the pencil, the amount of pressure that we apply to the pencil and so on. But the fur direction here is helping to build up the three-dimensional look of the face. If we don't get the fur curving over the important structures in the right way, then the face is going to look very flat and two-dimensional. So the fur direction is something that, as well as the lights and darks and where they are placed, both of those things in combination really does help to create that three-dimensional look and realism in that portrait. Now the fur length is something that is decided by how long that pencil is in contact with the paper for. So obviously if we're working with a really short coated dog then that pencil needs to be in contact with the paper for a fraction of a second. But if we're working on a longer head like a collie for instance those pencils need to be in contact with the paper for a longer period of time. It might only be an extra second but it is about adjusting that pencil technique for the right texture that we're working on. If I was to make my pencil strokes longer here for this pug, then obviously that is going to not represent this breed as it should. I'm gonna end up making the fur look fluffy or far too long, and it won't resemble that person's pet. Now the one aspect that I focused on for this section of the portrait was to allow the skin part of the drawing to show through. So here I worked with a really nice blended base layer of graphite powder. This is something that I've used throughout this portrait. But here I want to be making sure that I don't add too many individual pencil strokes and fur strokes to some areas of the muzzle because actually there was very limited amount of hair there, it was more the skin. So this is where I want to be making sure that I am pulling back on my pencils and using more of my erasers and softening techniques. Now I have just mentioned about the importance of fur length and here in this area it demonstrates it perfectly. Look how much shorter my pencil strokes are here compared to the top section of the head. There is a significant difference with how long or short the fur is in these two areas. So it's really important to be closely monitoring that reference photo at all times so that we can know exactly how long or how short that fur needs to be and adjust the pencil technique as we go. Now the one thing that I'm incredibly passionate about in teaching is that I always leave any errors, mistakes or things that I want to change in my tutorials. I never cut any of those out because learning from our mistakes is the best way of improving our drawing and painting skills. Any errors that we do make, whether or not it's something very, very minor, we are then transferring all of that information and knowledge into the next drawing and that's what improves our drawing skills. So when it came to this part of the chin, I added in the white hairs, the little gray hairs on the muzzle area, and I felt that I wasn't capturing those as realistically as I could. I knew I could do something a little bit better. So I ended up experimenting with different erasing techniques to see what I felt worked best. Now here, this looks realistic, but at the time I felt that it just wasn't quite right. 
Now what I ended up doing is going away from my easel for 10-15 minutes, coming back to it and straight away I noticed what I needed to do. So those alterations are only because I took a moment away from my easel and then I was able to look at it with fresh eyes. Now even though that was just 10 minutes, if there was something that I was really struggling with then I'd put that away for longer than that, even if it was for you know, a couple of days or even just an hour. I wouldn't recommend to do it for too long because sometimes we don't end up finishing that artwork if you stop it at a point where you've hit a challenge. I would always recommend to you know get back to it but by taking that time away for that 10 minutes I was able to come back to my easel and within that split second of looking at that I was able to fix the area that I, I thought I could improve on. Now all it was is I just had to go back in with my graphite pencils and make some of those white hairs a little bit narrower. So I'd actually applied a little bit too much pressure to my eraser and removed more of a thicker line and that's not what I needed for this fur texture. The white hairs needed to be thin. So all I had to do is, as I say, go back in with my graphite pencils and narrow those details back up. But the importance of taking you know, our, ourselves away from the easel and looking back at the artwork with fresh eyes, it's invaluable. That there can just make a huge difference. So the left part of the neck fur there, it's got a little bit more of a softer look to it and that's because it was slightly out of focus, like what I've mentioned at the beginning of the video. So there I was making sure to use a different range of techniques, more softening techniques with my pencils to achieve that look. So the fur direction, it did curve quite quickly here. I had to be making sure that I captured all of those changes in my drawing. And again, that's gonna to help to build up the shape of the face. So this is where the jaw would be, the side of the cheek, and this here has a lot more of those softer, more subtle structures that are all indicated and hinted at through the very slight curves in the way that the fur travels. Now this is exaggerated a little bit more because of the head tilt and the way that the pug is looking up. That's made some of this fur have a little bit more of a, a pushed up or scrunched up appearance. So that's going to affect how quickly that fur direction curves. But all of these things help to make that portrait more realistic. It's so, so important to study that reference photo. Now, something that you'll hear me talk about in other tutorials is the importance of leaving the whiskers to the very last layer, that very last element that goes into a portrait. That's because the whiskers overlap everything else. So for me, it's really important that I make sure I've got the fur underneath it finished. I'm happy with that before I add the whiskers. Otherwise you have to draw around them and it just gets a bit fiddly and it does slow the process down. So when it came to working on the whiskers, you want to be studying whether or not you've got some darker whiskers, whether or not they're catching the light, so you've got some lighter looking highlights on them. It's just all gonna be very unique to that reference photo. So again, for my whiskers, I used my Tombow Mono Eraser and to create these long fine lines when removing really dark graphite that I've got here, the technique with that Tombow Mono Eraser is crucial. This is something that I did focus that real time version on Patreon on. It's something that I do get a lot of questions about. So I like to make sure that I cover that as thoroughly as I can. Here's a photo of my finished drawing. And I do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I'd be really, really grateful. I upload a couple of videos to YouTube every week, so if you would like to get notified of that content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you would like to draw along to the real-time version of this pug, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. You do get the reference photo, line art and full material list. And I'm going to be uploading another video here to YouTube at the end of the week. If you've got any art-related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching.